Baofeng or Bofeng, UV9R Plus, which is advertised as an 18 watt dual band HT. So let's take a look at this today. Shut up and sit down. Hey, good afternoon. My name is Jason KC5HWB. This is Ham Radio 2.0 where we do reviews, news, and how-tos of lots of things that are new in amateur radio. And these Baofeng, I'm going to say it Baofeng. I'm just going to say that for the rest of the show. I'm just going to say Baofeng, okay? You can pronounce it Bofeng, Bofeng, Baofeng. I think that's that's the closest Chinese pronunciation I can get to. I'm just going to call it a Baofeng. These Baofeng videos are quite popular. There's a lot of people on YouTube uh, watching them, requesting them. Uh, looking at them, commenting on them. So why not do another one? This guy right here is advertised as an 18-watt dual-band transceiver, which uh, I can get a shot of it right here. And you can see right there. Uh, let's Let's zoom down a bit. Okay, so this is an uh, UV9R Plus. Power is... 18 watts, uh, equal to or less than 18 watts, <laughs> equal to or less than that, that sign right there. That's funny. It goes from 136 to 174 and 400 to 520. So some of you has, have asked about radios that uh, go up to 520. This one will do that. At the time of this recording, this one does not have an FCC tag on it. So all we're really going to do today is do some power testing. I'm going to put this on the power meter and see what it looks like because I have seen this exact model on Wish. Now, for those who don't know what Wish is, Wish is an app that sells really cheap stuff. Cheap quality and cheap price, sometimes both, sometimes one of the other. I got some, someone linked this this radio to me the other day and they're like, hey, and it's advertised as, as like a 60 watt HT on Wish. It says it's a UV9R+. Plus. I think there's more than one of them, but one of them was a UV9R+. Plus, and it said, 60 watts on an HT. And I'm like, yeah, that's not going to... Uh, and it advertised to come with like a 20,000 milliamp hour battery. So I want to go buy that just to do it, just to see what I get in the package and then do power testing on it because I'm, I, I have morbid curiosity. So... <laughs> This one is not the 60-watt version, okay? This one is the 18-watt version, and I'm going to show that to you here. Here's pretty much everything that comes in the box. We've got this battery here is an 8,000 milliamp hour battery right there, okay? This is the HT. It's got a, uh, it's got a cover right here with a blade-style connector. I'll take that off here in a second. Got some buttons over here. I'm going to put this on. It is definitely more durable uh, just it feels more durable than the standard Baofeng does. This is this is a little bit different. Most Bofangs have an SMA female on the top. This is an SMA male. This is more like the, uh, the Ochang radios, the Waxon UV8 and UV9 radios. So it's got a little bit different feel to it than that. It comes with this charger here. This charger's got a modular connector the round modular type connector and it is just the standard wall charger i suspect you could get you could find out what the what the rating is back here right here it's you're not gonna be able to see this in the camera i don't think but right here it says uh, uh input is dc 10 volts at 500 milliamps output is 8.4 volts at 400 milliamps so you'd have to get a dc you'd have to get a 10 volt connector in order to, I'm, I'm thinking about hooking this up to a external power source like a power supply or or even like in your vehicle or like an external battery source like we did for, for the deer lease video but 10 volts is kind of a weird number so you can do it you can definitely find stuff to do that but it's going to be it's not going to be as convenient as some this is kind of cool this comes with the um so this belt clip part right here comes with this little button and the belt clip and it attaches directly to the radio right here, so it doesn't detach, attach to the battery. I'm always liking that, as, as I've said before. You would take this screw off, put this button on, and then this would slide up and down on the button. So this, the belt clip would actually stay on your belt. It's a pretty 
solid looking belt clip. This would stay on your belt and then you would detach the radio from the actual clip that stays on your belt with the button that mounts to the radio. Okay, this is something different than a standard belt clip. So something else to keep in mind there. So let's go look at this. Uh, okay, that's the same uh, Bale Fang voice that we're used to hearing. Zoom down a bit. All right, there's that. All right, so we've got their butt. Well, I'm going to get a little bit closer, a little bit back shot there. Okay, that's better. All right, so we've got two. We've got this is your PTT. These are two programmable buttons right here. I assume they're pro programmable. If I hit the top one, it changes it to the FM stereo. If I hit the bottom one, ah, the flashlight. So, and it has a strobe. You press it a third time, you turn it off. So that's those things there. This has a blade connector on it. So if we take that screw out right there, it's going to be something different than the standard two-prong connector, I suspect. Did not come with a programming cable. I should point that out. That. Yeah, so that's, that's like a Motorola type, what they call a blade connector. So you're going to have to have a proprietary cable, cable and... Programming cable to, to program it or speaker mic or external earpiece or something like that. It's going to be proprietary to this radio. It might match up with some other radios. Who knows? But it didn't come with anything, so I can't really test that. Uh, here's your menu button. Menu. It's got 41 menus. There's zero, 42, really, because it starts at zero right there. 2.5 kilohertz step. Does not go to the 8.33 kilohertz step for the aircraft band. I don't think it goes to those frequencies anyway. This is a standard Bofang menu right here. Similar to many other menus we've had. So what I'm going to do... Actually, we're in, we're in channel mode right now. I'm going to leave it zoomed pretty close in so we can see the screen. I had to look this up in the manual, but basically you... To get into VFO mode, turn it off, hold down the menu button, mode. just like that. So we're going to type in, One, four, six, five, two, zero. and good, there's no offset there. And then we're going to go, nope. Okay, hit, hit the exit button, changes from the top to the bottom band. So... So let's go over here to the power station, and we will see what the power output actually looks like on this thing. Okay, so we're going to switch over here to this view. The, the radio does have three power settings in it. It's got low, mid, and high. We're just going to test it on high. That's 146.52 right there, and the focus, camera's focus. And then the bottom band's on 441.1, and I'm on high power, H for high, and if I key it up, it's pushing four watts, barely. So, obviously not close to the 18-watt advertisement at all. Menu. Power. Confirm. Change it to low power. About a watt. Menu. Power. Confirm. About two watts on mid-power. High power, four watts. That's t that's terrible. Let's go down here to four forty one dot one on high power. Four and a half watts. Menu. Nope. Keep hitting the wrong button. Power. Low. Confirm. Two watts on low on four forty. Four watts, yeah, about the same as mid and high are about the same on 440 at four four watts there. So that's uh, that's pretty pathetic, actually, for an, an HT that's advertised at 18 watts, up to 18 watts, it actually says. That's uh, that's terrible. Let's be real here. Do you, want an H Do you want an HT that's 18 watts if you're talking on it like this? 
Because the last time I put up a 10 watt dual band, uh, a video about a 10 watt dual band radio, which was the Ochang UV9, uh, yeah, UV9D Mate, which is the radio that I carry, have been, that's been my EDC for the last month or so for analog radio. That's been my everyday carry. And it does about nine, nine and a half watts per band on high power. Uh, and people were coming along saying, wow, you really want to key up with 10 watts and with an antenna in front of your face? So so if if this thing actually did 18 watts as it's advertised to do, do you really want to talk on it like that? Maybe yes, maybe no. You can get an external mic. Of course, as we discussed a minute ago, the connection is different. So you're going to have to get a proprietary external mic. You can hook up an outside antenna. You can turn the power down. It's got three power settings, mid, low, and high. So you can turn the power down if you're worried about talking to the HT on the HT and on the antenna in front of your face. So you can turn the power down to low or even mid, depending on what your power tests show. And then you could turn it up on high if you put it on a magnet antenna on the vehicle. You do that. But on this one, it doesn't get over about four, four and a half watts. Now, do I think that means the radio sucks? Not really, because most HTs are four to five watts anyway. So this might be a, I mean, I think this thing was like, I'll put a link in the description below. I got this on eBay. I think it was like 30 bucks, something like that. I'm sure it's on Amazon. You can buy, probably buy it on AliExpress and those places like that. So it's not doing what it's advertising to do, but it's doing what most of us would think would be a normal amount of power. And those of you who are concerned about shooting a bunch of 10 to 15 to 20 watts of RF directly out of an HT antenna into your face while you're talking on the on the uh, built-in microphone, maybe that's maybe this would be better for you. This thing's definitely more sturdy than a UV5R. It's more sturdy than a UV82. Here's the box right here, and it says anti-dust durable waterproof. Right there. That's the box it came in. It's kind of a different looking box. Anti-dust, durable, waterproof. So guess what we're going to do? I'm going to see how waterproof this thing is. We're not going to do that in this video. <laughs> but I might drop it into a glass of water, put a camera on it, and hit go, and see how long it lasts. That'd be fun. <laughs> so who's got one of these? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching today, and we'll catch you next time.